All right. Welcome back to the Skellywag channel. We're up here at the Marine Tech Center. Uh, Marine Tech Mike. I'm here with Margaret Palmert. Yeah. And uh, we are doing an update on Tech Tip 10, the bilge pump in a bucket. Um, so Margaret is one of our instructors. She's empowering women. She does women only diesel, do, I, do it yourself, and electrical, and other classes. She loves teaching. She's got a passion for boating and being on the water. And you're also in part of what's your other job you're doing? Uh, so I'm also the vice president of safety at sea for the Sailing Foundation, which um, is associated with U.S. Sailing's uh, safety at sea group, which uh, we'll talk a little bit more about later. And don't forget, I'm an alum of the, uh, That's the program right, as well. From yes. the program. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so there are some new rules for offshore sailing that these, these things are coming into. But before we get into that, why did this all happen? Well, um, we got the idea from the Vessel Assist boat down in Coronet Bay. And I was going to university and this uh, particular boat owner had me put like five bilge pumps on the boat. They were completely paranoid about sinking. And um, John down there, we called him a pirate. He said, that's crazy. He said, you want your two good bilge pumps, a standard dewatering and a backup. But if you have it in a bucket, this is the way to go. And I said, oh. And so he talked about how this tech, this tip here, you could put it in any compartment that's flooding. You could clip it onto any working battery. That's the idea. We just did that. You can give it to another boat, which is what happened this summer. If you look in the comments of Tech Tip 10, um, a year ago, there was a Nordhaven, got a little bit outside of a channel, struck a rock, was taking on water, was sinking. And there was another boat that uh, was in the vicinity that had bilge pump in a bucket. They gave it to them and because the pumps weren't keeping up. And with this um, additional, it was keeping up. And so the Coast Guard got on scene and their gas pump wasn't working. So they took the, uh, a couple of people off of the boat and they motored the catcher can and did an emergency haul out. Saved the boat. So some cool stories. We've got lots of stories like that. Um, but let's talk about the new sailing rule and get into some nuts and bolts of bilge pumps in a bucket. That sounds great. So um, we talked about bilge pump in a bucket and a quick overview of it. So U.S. Sailing is the national governing body for sailing in the United States underneath World Sailing. Uh, world Sailing sets rules for offshore races. That is boats that are like racing, to, you know, racing across oceans. U.S. Sailing takes that and comes up with their own they're called uh, safety equipment requirements for boats that are doing offshore races. They're updated regularly. So the rules for 2023 and 2024 um, uh, have some updates in it. So the special equipment regulations, um, they come in with, so there's input from very experienced uh, offshore sailors, offshore racers, on based on what's currently available and a kind of analysis of the incidents that have happened what should be done. So there are experts who put these requirements together and then they give that these are given to organizers of offshore races who may tweak them. But that's kind of the foundation. That's here. the yeah. foundation. Yeah. So they're always being improved. They're always they, being improved. We're always learning. They're always exactly always that's like scheduling college. Lifelong learning. Exactly always learning. And the good thing is you have the you know experienced racers involved in it. So there's some there's some balance there. They're not going to put out crazy regulations that have no basis and are too expensive because they won't be accepted. So if they've been accepted, smart people have vetted them and say, yeah, that's that's a good thing to consider having on your boat. So so these are the rules that we used that we knew. Like so, we're going to focus on the bilge pumps. So every boat apparently should have a permanently installed bilge pump. Yes. For boats, so this is for monohulls that are doing offshore races <laughs> under these requirements, yes? Well, they, they have requirements for dewatering pumps. Yes, so I also think that we're cruisers more than racers, but these ideas are good. Exactly. Just because we're not, I'm not particularly going to take off for Hawaii, I'm still going to be out on the Pacific Ocean. So yes. I still feel like I should have some safety equipment. Exactly. So these safety equipment requirements, while they're required for offshore racers, for those of us who are cruisers as well, it's like, well, that's kind of an interesting thought. Let me take a look yeah. at that. <laughs> so uh, 10 gallon a minute primary pump, that's basically what we consider for nuisance water. And then a second permanently installed, same size. So that's been the old rules, right? They've, yes. they've always said, 
if you're going to go out racing, cruising, I don't care. You should always have two bilge pumps. Um, but the new one that you worked on this past year. Oh, yeah, I didn't work on it. Oh, work I, on I, it. I have uh, adopted, or I've seen it, and it's like, how are we going to do that? Oh, how are we yeah, yes. implementing it? So you, that's, yeah, that's how are the, people going to do this? Okay. Uh, Art had said in our Tech Tip 10 that you should have your leads and your hose uh, at least a third of the length of the boat. Rule yeah, of thumb. The, the exit hose should be, their rule of thumb is at least a third of the length of the boat. Yeah. So a 45 foot boat, 15, 15 foot feet. Hose because what we're going to do, we're going to pull this thing out of the bucket and um, the you want to have strain relief so that you're not uh, pulling on your wires, of course. But this one is, this is the, I think, the what I prefer. It's 3,700 gallons. So anything that's up with a inch and a half discharge hose and then you can throw it in the compartment and then we just pull this out of here probably faster than this if i was in the sinking this goes out the port light and then you want to make sure you've got uh good wire so you don't have voltage drop and so this is a 10 gauge wire Right. Yeah, the requirement is actually 3,000 gallons per hour for this. this oh, for the emergency, emergency water. You need a 3,000 minimum. So. Yeah, 3,000 minimum. So that's only 600. So, out, yeah. out. So, I mean, you can buy these cheap ones online. You know, it would be cheaper, but again, that's 1,100 gallons per hour. So not going to cut not it. Not going to cut it. So, yeah. Uh, um, I like the, there's a lot of different uh, styles of discharge hose that we've tried. And so one thing that we've learned is, as you put it in the bucket, the hose that you get at the marine chandleries with these little sections in the corrugated hose doesn't coil quite as nice as if you're using like a sump pump plastic discharge hose. So that's plastic discharge hose that I just got at a, a terrestrial plumbing supply store. Yeah. It's just regular drain hose. But it but doesn't, purpose, doesn't yeah. kink, it works. I mean, it's going to spend most of its life in a canvas bag or in this bucket. And so that's an option. There's some heavier duty options that, um, that you can get um, that will coil up better. And then, yeah, the really nice stuff, um, when you get a corrugated hose, you do lose some flow. Um, and, and by the way, when these pumps are rated at 3,000 plus gallons, 3,700 gallons, that's pumping flat with a perfectly good battery. So when we start running it through a corrugated hose, we're going to lose some of that 3,700. And if you're lifting it 10 feet up from a bilge and out of port light, you're going to lose up to a third, I would say at least. You're going to lose quite a bit. But the idea is it's still going to do a great job. This thing is going to get that boat dewatered or give you some time to find out where the water ingress is. Right, and that's and that, that's why I think the specifications for 3,000 gallons per hour, because that may seem like a lot, but in the real world, you're lifting it, you know, eight to 10 feet on a 45 foot boat, you're, so you're losing some there, and then the voltage that you're actually getting to the pump is not gonna be, um, you know, probably what that spec was set to. Right. So the hoses of different diameters, depending on what you're going to, and there is a little bit of a trade-off. You know, a bigger hose, you're going to get more flow, but if you're trying to fit it into something that you're going to stow, um, you know that there might be a trade-off to to consider that in the diameter of the hose you're going to. And then the stronger hoses, the more reinforced, um, less prone to kinking. Um, this one still can, as I discovered. Yes, so. but but the much harder to store. Much so. harder to store. Um, for the permanently installed bilge pumps too, we forgot to mention you can. It doesn't have to be an electric pump. You can have a manual pump for one of the two permanently installed. Yeah. Yeah. But this one here is going to need to be an electric pump, or does it just say 3,000? It has. It says it has to uh, 3,000 gallons per minute, and you need to be able to connect it to uh, the boat's uh, propulsion engine. Engine. Yeah, or system. Or any yeah. working battery. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where these the alligator clips just come in really nice. You know, yeah. any battery that you have that's charged, and, and I, so. And I'm a coward, so I I I put them <laughs> I put these clips on it. <laughs> They are good for sure. Um, so, the one of the other things that you've done is so. And by the way, Margaret has done a lot of down. She went through a whole bunch of different boats and hooked up these pumps and and measured and made sure that what we're saying is good, right? And yeah, and because what you know the requirement is that the hose either needs to be able to go up and out 
a opening port light, um, which makes sense, or it can go into the cockpit if the cockpit drains, obviously. So that's going to vary from boat to boat. But still, even so, so I'm looking at boats in like the 45 to 50 foot range. Can I, with this length of these lengths of wires and these lengths of hose, can I put it in various compartments? Because that's one of the requirements about this is it says that you need to the, the pump itself doesn't actually have to be portable, but the, the pickup needs to be portable into um, different compartments in the boat, all the different compartments in the boat. So I looked at it with the standpoint of, well, if I have a bilge pump, where can I drop it? Can I drop it in the deepest part of the boat? And I found on some of the boats that it's almost a tight fit to slide that down into the deepest uh, bilge pumps place. Uh, I also took it to what would be, I, in my mind, the most hazardous compartment on the boat, the place where there's the biggest, the biggest through hole in the boat with the sketchiest uh, uh, rusty hose, hose clamp, a rusty hose clamp, and a, a you know a, 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 a um, valve that doesn't necessarily work. Um, so looking at that, and the, then also making sure that the hose could go up through a port light, or I think more conservatively, you know, because if if you're having a really bad day, you're taking on water, and you're in big seas, you might not want to be opening the port lights to dewater because that may be defeating the purpose. So making sure you could get it back into the cockpit and the cockpit dewater. So all sorts of things to consider. And I think Art's done a couple of these with a collapsible hose for an option for because we, we keep storage is the big one, right? That we've been coming up against. And so um, yeah, so this has the advantage, you know, this collapsible hose, a big winner in terms of weight, a big winner in terms of stowage. But the challenge with this is that it kinks. It kinks so very you're trying easily. To, you're, trying to, you're trying to get water out of it, and if it gets a kink in it, as we've all done with you know, garden hoses, and that's a problem. Now, if you're on a, uh, a, a well-crewed offshore boat, and you've got 10 people on board, and you can have two people whose only job is to- Just to make sure the hose- Make sure the hose doesn't job. kink, that may be one thing. But if you're a cruising couple, you know, yeah, I think I, I think that for my purposes, I'm going to definitely stick to a, a corrugated hose that won't kink, and uh, to get that water up and out of the boat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So some of the considerations in terms of what what flow are you actually going to get out of it would be not only the rated size of the pump, but as we talked about, the head pressure, which can have you know can affect it a lot, but also the actual voltage that's getting to the battery. So thinking about what's going to be driving this. Okay, you're going to take it to a battery, but unless your engine's running, the alternator's running, recharging the battery, how long is that going to last? And what sort of voltage is actually going to get to the pump? Less voltage, less flow. Yeah, so hopefully, anytime you're in a sinking situation, you can get that engine cranked up, and you're, if that alternator's working, those extra couple of volts make a big difference in how much water you're going to pump. But we realize that maybe the engine doesn't work. <laughs> maybe that's part of the problem that we're in this situation. So. Uh, that could be a thing, uh, but uh, hose clamps have this thing together. Of course, you don't want to do you don't want to putting anything together um, when you're in this emergency. So yeah, so some of the options, and thanks to Chuck Hawley, um, the former chair of the Safety at Sea Committee at U.S. Sailing, gave me a lot of good pictures and ideas for this. And one of the things that he he, he did, which I really liked, is there are hose clamps that you can close manually. You don't need a tool to close. So there. Um, I think that would be a great idea. So if you can't if you can't stow the hose on the Connect it on pit, the pump, have something that's quick and ready to go. You have something that you don't need to find a screwdriver or something to attach. And so um, that was a great, great idea, great suggestion. Great thing. One other thing he also did is, you know, I, I used just a five gallon bucket um, with a lid on it, a snap on lid, which is also is an unsnap lid. One thing that uh, Chuck did was he used a bucket about this side that actually had a screw on top. Yeah. And we know how things come open in boats. And or don't after a while. Or don't after a while <laughs> and how they're probably, even though they shouldn't be, people are going to be stepping on them and sitting on them. And so I like that idea of, you know, maybe looking at the, the, the uh, how things are going to be stowed. I think if, if I didn't have as much storage as I had, I would probably be looking at a, at a canvas bag option for these, you know, mm -hmm. duffel would be good. Yeah, and what Chuck did was a kind of a combination of that screw-on bucket with protecting the electric bilge pump in the bucket, and then that put inside a canvas bag with the hose around the outside, so protecting the, the critical piece. And um, with the hose on the outside, of course, uh, the hose, it's, it, it's depending on what type of hose you use um, and how, much, how long it's going to be there and 
uh, what abrasion it's going to be susceptible to. It could get its own pinhole leaks. It could, yes. <laughs> happens. So yeah. just from sitting around and vibration and everything else. Um, well, there you have it. Hopefully we uh, will be encouraging some viewers, and you'll show this in some of your other yeah. coursework, that, uh, to put together a little emergency bilge pump and, exactly. and have it ready to go just in case. Exactly. I, yeah. I always said, you know what, I figure that I don't, I'm going to be like the boat hopefully in Alaska where I'm just sharing my pump to the next boat. Exactly. I feel like that's worth a, a really nice dinner at the end of the day if you save, you save someone's boat. If I said, excuse me, sir, <laughs> yeah. would you like a yeah. bilge pump in a bucket? There you go. Yes. Off we go. <laughs> Off you go. So, so thanks, thanks again to uh, U.S. Sailing Safety at Sea and Chuck Holly for his input and, and pictures and advice on this. And thank you so much, Mike, for letting me... Uh, let me uh, collaborate with you on this. Well, thanks for coming to Marine Tech again. Look forward to our next class we're going to teach. Yes. See you later, everyone. Bye now.